with so many unique perks to choose from in Cold War, which ones should you be picking for your classes? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's Forrest or Dave here. Welcome back to another Cold War video. Today, we are looking at specifically perks. Everyone's talking about the best classes for weapons, best attachments and such. But really, perks are a really important part of your loadout. These are what define how you play, your playstyle overall, and can really give you extra strengths in certain areas. Now, I believe that there are certain perks which you should definitely be running, and there's certain perks that you should never be running. And then there's some in the middle, which you could run if you're feeling like it, or if it fits your playstyle, or potentially not, depending on how the enemies are playing or how the game is going. So this whole video is going to be creating a tier list of all the perks in the game so that you guys get the best recommendations for what you should be running. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure that you like the video and also subscribe and hit the notification bell uh, for more videos coming very soon. So let's start off with the perk one slot and we're starting off with engineer, uh, which allows you to detect enemy equipment and score streaks through walls. You can also see score streaks on your minimap uh, and also re-roll care packages. I'm going through each of these little bits here, um, detecting the enemy equipment and score streaks. Score streaks, not too important apart from potentially things like uh, the sentry turret. Uh, the equipment wise, that covers things like C4 that you can put down, so things like that, and also all of the field upgrades, so uh, the field mics, the prox mines and stuff like that. I would say that it's useful potentially seeing prox mines and gas mines so you don't run into them. Uh, but things like the uh, the trophy system, you're not really in a, in, in a position where you really need to be able to see those. You know they're going to be there uh, on certain points if you're playing things like hardpoint and you can uh, and you, you can figure out where they are and take them out normally. Uh, things like the field mic are not too useful to be able to see through walls because if you're running ninja, which I'd highly recommend you do, hint, hint, for the rest of this video when we get to that point, but ninja cuts down the usage of the field mic quite heavily anyway. So uh, I feel like this one has some decent strengths. I think the thing to do with seeing score streaks on your minimap and re-rolling care packages isn't that useful really it's just a bit of a fun addition um, but i'm going to shove this in the in the b tier it's kind of kind of middle of the pack here not too not too good um but not really terrible either Next up, we got Paranoia, which allows you to hear an alert when an enemy aims at you and your vision pulses if the enemy is outside of your view. Um, this is really not very good. In my testing, this was really inaccurate um, because basically the, uh, the, the vision pulses only appear on the top, the bottom, the left or the right of your screen. It's not actually that accurate to show you where someone really is. Um, I even had someone who was standing to my right and it seemed to show that they were behind me because they were kind of behind and right for me. So I tried to spin on them and I couldn't really get it to work. It's really distracting overall that the, the hearing the alert just it clouds your it clouds your brain up. You can't really focus on the game. So maybe this has some sort of purpose in something like combined arms or fire team dirty bomb when you've got someone aiming at you from a long way away. But I I think usually you could react quick enough to not die when someone aims at you. And, and if you weren't going to react to that anyway, then I don't think Paranoia is going to save you. So this is going to be my first D tier perk. I really would never run this unless you're really coming up with some interesting build for, as I said, fire team dirty bomb or something. It's It's really not very good. Third on the list, we have Flak Jacket for the perk one slot, and this allows you to take less damage from enemy explosives, Molotov, and combat bow flames. This is, I'm just going to say it straight away, this is going straight in my S tier of perks. This is an amazing perk. There's so much nade spam in this game, whether it's uh, grenades, semtexes, uh, Molotovs, as it says, anything like that. Um, I think that this is an almost necessary perk uh, to play the game, especially when you're playing game modes like Domination, like Hardpoint, like Control, those respawn game modes where people are just chucking loads and loads nades uh you will literally just not die to one of these to, to one of those explosives even if you're right next to it um you'll be able to, to to chunk that damage and then potentially return fire and actually win the fight whereas without the flat jacket you're just instantly dead from stray nades that you're not even really that near it really cuts down that damage definitely an s tier perk and definitely one you should be running in almost all of your games and following on from Flak Jacket, we've got Tactical Mask, which gives you maximized resistance to flashbangs and stun grenades and makes you immune to gas. So the Tac Mask perk is pretty much as good as Flak Jacket, really. It just, instead of the explosives uh, being, able to, being able to get rid of those, it gets rid of that flashbang and stun grenade that are really annoying in this game. The stun grenade especially just seems to be so strong in this game. You 
cannot fight back when someone lobs a stun at you because you can't aim you can barely move you can barely see it's really annoying with the amount of people that are running them so i'm going to put this in s tier along with flak jacket um i would say depending on how the enemy team are playing if, if the enemy team are running loads of explosives which they are more likely to be using then use flak jacket uh if they're running a lot of these stun grenades if people just seem to be spamming them then you can run tactical mask and if they're running both then just run perk greed or uh, the lawbreaker uh, wild card and just run both because they can both be really useful so another s tier perk here from tactical mask and finally in the perk one slot we have forward intel which allows you to see indicators for enemy reinforcements on your minimap and the minimap also shows a larger area so you can see the larger area of the minimap in the background here it's actually a massive increase apparently it's about 60 percent increase um which if you're using the minimap as you should be in this game because of you know people's red dots are on the minimap again thank god treyarch added that back in um it, having that big minimap means you can always have an idea of where fights are going on and you can engage in them and and, and choose your, your routing that you want to do to how you want to progress those fights um I, the seeing indicators on the minimap is actually very interesting how this works there's three main points to this uh basically if an enemy dies and then respawns it, they will show up as a ping on the edge of your minimap the key point here is that if the enemy spawns directly in the area that your minimap can see and and remember that it does show a much larger area if they're actually in that area you won't see them you'll actually only see them if they're if they're outside the edge of where your minimap is showing so it loses a bit of value because of that but the other thing i noticed which brings it value back up is that if you die when you've got forward intel on you can actually see where enemies are when you respawn just for a short amount of time and once again they have to be outside of your uh, minimap range but on those slightly like medium to large maps you're instantly knowing where most enemies are positioning you can tell your teammates where people are and then you can play around it i think forward intel is one of the most underrated perks in the game and if it wasn't in the same area as flak jacket and tack mask it would definitely be a, be a must run for me and to be honest i might still run it over one of, of a potentially tack mask in some of my games if i'm going for high kill streaks i'm going to put this in the a tier just below uh tack mask and flak jacket because i think it's a really underrated perk that you should definitely try out next let's move into perk two so we're first looking at assassin enemies that appear on your minimap when shooting or revealed by a spy plane will have a crosshair indicator instead of a red dot if they're on a kill streak receive extra score for taking them down uh this one well i mean yes this perk does actually give you quite a nice boost to your score in game um the score you get for killing that person on a kill streak is based on how many kills they have so you can get a solid amount of score for killing that person but it doesn't really do much else and honestly uh, with how quick games are in cod it's unlikely that you'll consistently be the one who's actually killing that person who's on a kill streak they'll, they'll probably just die to someone else who might not even be running assassin just because of the nature of how mad the game is uh, it doesn't really help your team out it it doesn't really do much at all apart from give you a bit more score um it's a bit of a shame because assassin sounds like it's going to be a pretty cool perk but unfortunately it's not and it's going to go in the d tier with paranoia at the bottom i don't think you should be running this uh, unless you are really just going for maximized score every game and want that to eat every little every single little bit of it um i honestly don't think you should be running this avoid it please <laughs> Next, we have Gearhead, which reduces the field upgrade cooldown and allows you to store up to two field upgrade charges. I love Gearhead, and Gearhead gains a lot of power. Uh, this is kind of a spoiler, but it gains a lot of power because of how strong it is for a perk 2. A lot of the perk 2s aren't that great. Um, and field upgrades in this game are amazing, um, both in casual get play and also on a more professional level. Whether you're, you know, really, really tryharding in hardpoint and want uh, double the amount of um, trophy systems, or if you're running all those field mics just to field mic up the whole map and just seem to know where everyone is. Having gearhead is, it just enables you to have such a presence with a large amount of these field upgrades. And the reduced field upgrade cooldown is also nuts. I think it's like half the time it takes to, to refill one of these so you end up getting two in the same time that you would usually get one uh, i really really like this perk it's definitely going in my s tier uh partly because of its strength but also partly because it's a perk too and so it doesn't compete with tack mask and flak jacket and you can run it alongside those and have a really good setup next we have scavenger which is a uh kind of a cornerstone for uh for call of duty it allows you to replenish ammo from fallen players so when you kill someone you run over their dead body you get a load of ammo um 
Many guns in this game actually have a fairly small overall ammo pool unless you're running one of those ammo attachments. Um, and so Scavenger allows you to kind of keep your streak up if you're if you're playing for those kills and you don't want to have to pick up some sort of crap gun that another enemy has. I'm sorry, a lot of people are running really crappy guns in this game. Um, or you don't need to just die to get more ammo. So I do really like Scavenger for that. But apart from that, it doesn't it doesn't really do a huge amount and um yeah and as i said you can run those ammo attachments if ammo is becoming a real big issue so um i'm gonna put this in b tier because i think it's situational uh if you're having games we are going on those big streaks potentially you can swap to this if you're having issues with your ammo but it depends on the kind of gun it's very situational so yeah it's definitely a b tier perk Next, we have Quartermaster, which allows you to recharge your equipment over 25 seconds in game. So when it says equipment here, this means both your primary and your secondary grenade or uh, lethal and tactical, whatever you want to call it. So your grenades and your semtexes and also your flashbangs and your stuns. Uh, the key thing here, and one thing I didn't realize originally, is that uh, you actually can only recharge one bit of equipment at once. So if you throw your grenade, uh, that will trigger the 25 second cooldown to get the grenade back. Um, and then if you instantly throw your your stun grenade uh, during that time when you're regenerating your first grenade uh, the regeneration time for the second grenade won't start until the first one's ended so you can't regen both at the same time sorry a bit of a confusing way of explaining that there um, but it, it, it's cool it's just not that useful I, I don't think it really gives enough impact or affects my grenade usage that much in games since i I'm not really spamming them over and over. And if I'm playing a game where I am really throwing myself at the point and, and, and spamming grenades throughout the game, I'm actually usually dying a decent amount, at least at least once every like 30 seconds or so. And that might not sound good, but that's just how the game seems to go. So I don't think the recharging one bit of equipment every 25 seconds is going to have a huge impact enough to be running a perk for it. So I'm going to put uh, the Quartermaster perk at uh, a B tier along with... So, so how, same as how I had Scavenger. I think it's about the same level. Once again, it's a situational thing depending on how the game's going on. Uh, not too good, but not too bad either. Finally, we have Tracker for our perk 2, which allows you to see the imprint of enemy footsteps. And if you aim at the enemies, uh, you reveal them on your teammate's map. So this one is a perk which a lot of people who I think are newer to the game might look at and think is going to be really good, especially for things like search and destroy where you can just track down enemies. But from my testing, it just really isn't that useful. Um, it's not that useful specifically in a game like COD where it's just so quick and there's just so much going on. Um, it adds to the visual clutter, which you don't want to see that much. I also noticed from my testing that the footsteps disappear really quickly when you're following an enemy. So it's very easy to just lose track of footsteps anyway. Um, if you've caught some footsteps on the floor, it's likely that the enemy's pretty near. It's, they're not going to have ran off that far and you're not going to be able to hunt them down. It just doesn't really fit into this game that much. I really do not like it. Uh, they're, they're quite hard to see on the floor sometimes. It just all adds up to a perk that I really don't think is great. And I'm going to put it in C tier. I think it's better than the perks like assassin and paranoia because it does have that potential to like help you out in some way um whereas the other two just don't really help at all so it's going to be c tier for me not really good at all so i wouldn't really recommend it and finally we're on to perk three so first of all we have Gung Ho, which allows you to fire your weapon and use equipment while sprinting. You move at full speed while reloading. You switch weapons faster, take less damage from falling, and fire more accurately while sliding. This perk I slept on. Even though it's the first perk three, you'll have it on your classes when you first start the game. I slept on this perk because I just wanted Ghost, I wanted Ninja, and I didn't think of Gung Ho. But in this game, Gung Ho is insane. This is a perk which gives you so much for one perk slot. It just took me ages to read through it all to you just there. Things like firing your weapon and using your equipment while sprinting. I'd, I'd say firing your weapon while sprinting isn't that useful unless you're running like things like a shotgun because I'm not really firing from the hip anyway. Using equipment while sprinting is insane because there's actually a decent amount of time to throw grenades in this game. It really slows you down if you're not running gung-ho. Um, moving at full speed when re reloading allows you to just get the drop on enemies and keep the pace up in fights. Switching weapons faster means if you do run out of ammo, and another person comes and you can swap to a pistol and you can just take them out really easily uh taking less damage from falling is here and there doesn't really matter and firing accurately while sliding well i mean we, we, we've seen from modern warfare how uh good sliding is in cod games so sliding into battle and hip firing with like uh an mp5 or an smg of some sort with a laser on 
with Gung Ho on, you're going to be getting a lot of kills sliding into rooms doing that. So uh, it's an amazing perk. It's an S tier for me for sure. And yeah, I really like it. So I'd recommend you run it. Next up, we have Ghost, the classic perk, which everyone says you've got to run in every single class because mainly it makes you undetectable by spy planes. Now, specifically in this game, it's whenever you're moving. So if you're someone who likes to, I, 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 don't, I, don't, know who, I don't know who enjoys doing this, but if you like, you know, putting your ghost on and sitting in a corner, then you're still going to appear on the spy planes. So be careful. Um, it's, it's not as good in this game, I don't think. I don't think you need to be running this as much. There's... The, the spy planes are really easy to take out. If you run a Sigma or if you're running a Sam turret, you can take out spy planes almost instantly. Um, and if you just keep moving, you know, someone who plays with a decent amount of pace, then it, it, you, you just don't need Ghost. You just don't need Ghost. I, I, think it's, I think it's a crutch perk. I think there's better perks in perk three to run than Ghost in this COD. So I'm going to put it at A tier. It's still a very good perk, but there's better stuff to be running, honestly. Next, we've got Cold Blooded, which means that AI score streaks won't target you. Players controlled score streaks will not highlight you. You won't show up on thermal. Uh, players in vehicles won't see your nameplate and you're immune to flashlight attachments. Um, I think that this is actually probably about as good as Ghost in this game. I'm going to instantly put it in that A tier with Ghost. Um, AI controlled score streaks not targeting you. Well, that's a massive thing in this game because Getting score streaks is easier in this game. That Yes, there are a lot of score, but you keep a lot of that score through death. So there's a lot of these attack choppers and sentry guns down all the time that I seem to see. Um, and this will just keep you protected from them. So if enemies are running loads of them, just shove cold-blooded on. You've got no problems when you're if you're just keeping getting killed by them. Uh, the other one that's really important to talk about is being immune to flashlight attachments. The flashlight attachments are very good in this game. Having that reveal distance um, helps with some of the visual, the, vis the visibility problems in this game. Um, and a lot of people are being recommended to run that to just see those little red dots over your head. So having cold-blooded will get rid of that completely, which is really nice. Um, a tier perk. I think it's actually caught up with how good Ghost is for public games. So uh, yeah, I really like it. Next up is Ninja. Oh, Ninja. Ninja is an amazing perk. It says here, sprint more quietly and you're resistant to field mic one sprinting. Speak only when necessary. When it says sprint more quietly, you are basically silent. Just listen to this clip. The difference between having ninja on and not having ninja on is 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 life or death in this game. Uh, the footsteps are so loud, especially if you have your uh, your uh, your audio mode set to the right thing. So I so I, I run it on high boost. You can hear footsteps so easily, and ninja just cuts that out. Whether you're playing a fast-paced respawn game or you're playing a game like S and D, ninja is necessary. If you're not running ninja and you're like the one person on your team not running it, then you are basically trolling your game. So I'm gonna shove ninja in the S plus tier. And I got recommended to do this by a friend when I showed them the tier list, and I actually agree because it is that good. This is on every single one of my classes because whether I'm playing fast or playing slow, I do not want to die because someone heard my loud Bigfoot feet <laughs> just stomping along the ground. So put Ninja on, it's amazing. And the final perk in perk three, Spycraft. You can hack enemy field upgrades. You're immune to counter spy plane, immune to jammers, trackers, and paranoia. You won't trigger proxy mines or gas mines, and you can booby trap enemy care packages. So this gives you a lot of stuff, similar to how Gung Ho gave me a lot of stuff. But um, a lot of the stuff it gives you is just not that good. Um, being able to hack enemy field upgrade grades is very seldom useful, really. Um, and you've got to go right up to them to, to, to interact with them. It's just pointless. You're probably going to die trying to do that anyway. Um, being immune to counter spy, pl spy planes is kind of it's kind of nice, I guess. Um, but Jammer, um, Tracker, and Paranoia, I've already said that they're not good things to be running. Well, J Jammer I didn't talk about, but Tracker and Paranoia are just not good to run. Um, not triggering proxy mines is quite nice because some people are running them, but I would say less people than in uh, other games because they're not equipment. They're a field upgrade, and people much prefer other field upgrades. And booby tracking, booby trapping the enemy care packages is just... I mean, it's just a joke, isn't it? It's just a bit of a laugh. It's funny, but it's not that useful and it takes a bit of time to do. So Spycraft is going to be my final perk in D tier because it gives you a lot, but it's just a lot of nothing. So don't bother running it. 
And there we go, guys. That is my tier list of perks. And so the ones I'd really highly recommend running on a lot of your classes, things like Ninja, definitely. Um, but then Flak Jacket, Tack Mask, Gearhead, Gung Ho. They're like my really top tier perks. And then you can swap a couple of them out potentially. Not Ninja. Keep Ninja on because it's so good. But you can swap a couple of them out and try out some other things in your games. Don't feel like you have to run the same thing every game. But if you're, if you're just trying to step up your level and, and, and get more consistently good games then i'd recommend these to be the ones that you stick to so if you've enjoyed the video as i said at the beginning make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos coming very soon it's been four years or dave here thank you very much bye bye